this is what you do. All right, what I'd like to do is show you guys how to determine what the x and y intercepts of the given equation. First of all, let's go over what the x and y intercepts are going to do. Given an equation, okay, that is my y intercept. And a lot of times on a quadratic equation, we'll be given two x intercepts. Sometimes we can give in, be given none, sometimes we'll just be given one. However, you have to remember when you're given your x intercepts that your y value equals zero. And on my y intercept, my x value equals zero. That's the main important thing you guys have to know for your intercepts. So if I say determine what the y and x intercepts are, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function, and I'm going to, instead of using f, I'm just going to kind of think of it in terms of y equals 2x squared uh, plus 7x minus 30, and I'm just going to uh, compute 0 in for x and y. So first one is the easy one. Uh, if I want to find the y-intercept, that means x equals 0. So I'm going to, instead of using f of x, I'm going to use y. So y equals 2 times 0 squared plus 7 times 0 minus 30. y equals negative 30. So therefore, my point is 0, negative 30. Really that simple. Um, to find the x-intercept, now, again, you need to solve it. Now I'm going to put a 0 in for y. So 0 equals 2x squared plus 7x minus 30. Now it's a little more difficult because if I add a 30 onto that side, I still have an x, I have a, an x squared and an x over here that I have to go and solve for. So the method that we've used, that we've been practicing to go and solve for this, is what we like to say is factoring, right? We've done a lot of factoring problems. And a lot of students get mixed up because they can know how to do factoring, but then once we use the word enough, find the x-intercept, or find the roots, or find the solutions. Um, a lot of kids get mixed up. Well, guys, when you have a problem like this, when you just need to find what each x value is, you have to use your factoring techniques. So that's exactly what we have to do for this problem. So I'm going to erase all this, and I'm going to show you guys three different factoring techniques that you can use to uh, solve this problem. So we need to essentially factor this. Or we need to find the roots of this equation. Or we need to find the solutions of this equation. Or we need to find the x-intercepts. Whichever way it might be presented in your book, here's your equation. You need to find the values for x. So the first thing we always need to do is I always like to, again, look at my a, b, and c. a equals 2. b equals 7. c equals a negative 30. Now, what I'm going to do is, since I have a lot of, a lot of times we did guess and check and we said, well, one, one binomial is 2, and the other binomial is at, or in just 1. And then you just did all the factors of 30 and all the factors of 2, and you kind of did guess and check to see which one worked. However, a little bit easier way to do it is um, we're going to multiply our a times c, and then we're just going to factor out our uh, GCF later. So to do that, we're going to do a times c, which is 2 times negative 30, which is a negative 60. And then we're going to add them, or then, then we're going to take our b term, which is 7. And what we determine is what two numbers are going to multiply to give you negative 60, but add, multiply, but add to give you 7. And we go and look at that, and we say it's going to be negative, tw no, I'm sorry, positive 12 and negative 5. Okay? So now what are you going to do with those factors? Because obviously, um, your equation cannot just be 2x times negative 5 and, and x is 12. So we're going to have to go and factor these out. So there's three different methods I'm going to give you guys. So hopefully I'll write down these ways. Uh, first method, let's do a box. OK, and we'll do what we call like an area box. And we'll say our first term is 2x squared. Our c term is 30. And now, our two products would be 12x and negative 5x. And I'll finish this in just a second. Uh, the next way we could do this is we could take our kind of leading term and create our two binomials. So you could do 2x and then do plus 12 times 2x minus 5. I know that does not equal 2x squared because 2x times 2x is 4x squared, but just wait for it. And then I'm going to erase this. And the last term one we could do is we could rewrite this, but instead of writing 7x, we could write 
um, we could write 12x plus 2x. So we could write 2x squared plus 12x minus 5x minus 30. And hopefully this all should shoots out of the video. All right, here's three different ways. I've gone through most of these ways, but I'm going to put them all in a video so you guys can determine which, which way you understand the best and which way you'd like to use. If you, want to use. if you want to take your factors and then put them in a box, now what you need to do is, remember, an area box is you multiply the side lengths to find the area. So now what you're going to do is you're going to draw them back to find the side lengths. So therefore, I need to figure out what, two, what would have to be my length and my width to find the area of 2x squared. Obviously, it has to be 2x and x, right? But I can't have 2x here because 2x times what gives you negative 5x? That's a fraction. And we don't want to be using fractions. So we're going to have to say 2x has to be here and x has to be here. 2x times what gives you 12x? 6. x times what gives you negative 5x squared? Negative 5. So therefore, I know that, and that's a positive 6. So therefore, my answer is 2x minus 5 times x plus 6. Method number one. Mm. Method number two. You just go ahead and again take the A term, you put it into there, and then now I factor out my GCF. So what does this binomial have in common? It has a two, right? So let's factor out a two. So two, x plus six. This has nothing in common. Two x minus five. Since this is just a GCF, it's just a factor of everything. Actually, I'm not gonna erase it. Let's just rewrite it. Method number three. Method number two. All right. Then method number three, now again I can do the exact same thing, but now what I'm going to do is, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor by grouping. So now I'm going to split up, I'm going to split up my two sides, So because whenever we have four different terms and we need to go and factor them, we need to go and use the factor by grouping technique. So in fact, it's by grouping, these now have in common a 2x. And when I pull out a 2x, I am left with um, an x plus 6. And then here, when I can pull out a negative 5, I'm left with a x plus 6. Now, when I look at these two terms, they both have an x plus 6 in common. So I can factor an x plus 6 out. So I'm left with x plus 6 times what's left over, 2x minus 5. So as you guys notice, that's three different ways to go ahead and factor. And pretty much what you're determining is not just factoring, but you're also determining how to find the x-intercepts, the roots, the solutions of your given equation, and especially when a is greater than 1.